Hello there, my name is Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares and you may notice I'm holding this little mech figure and the reason for that is because I want to make pixel art using some kind of a reference. Uh, most artists use nude models or bowls of fruit. I prefer plastic robot toys. Uh, so let's take a closer look at this little buddy and get rolling. My friends, this unit is known as Scope Dog, and it's a figure produced by B25 based on the 1983 mecha anime series Armored Trooper Votoms. Now, I know this is fairly obvious, but Votoms is an acronym that means Vertical One Man Tank for Offense and Maneuvers. Naturally. And indeed, there's a hatch on the figure that opens to reveal a removable pilot, Kiriko QV, the lead character of the series. What I love about these two is how they each have strong designs individually, but still feel cohesive together somehow. Like, pairing an army tank green mech with a blue-haired, red jumpsuited protagonist just might be the most 1980s mecha anime thing to ever exist. And when I saw them, I wanted to know more about their story and the world that they came from. It's a special thing when a particular object sparks joy, so I'm here to honor that today in the best way that I know how, which is by making illustrated representations of these characters using tiny squares. I thought about working from a reference photo, but one of the benefits of having a tangible object is that you can rotate it around to get a sense of the geometry and kind of study all the finer details that it has to offer. I started by measuring out the height of the pilot figure, which is exactly 2.5 inches, hence the name of the manufacturer, B25, which literally stands for B2.5 inches. Then I equated that height to a certain size in pixels, which I decided on a character height of 50 pixels, because that's a sizing I'm comfortable working with for character work. And after some quick math, it also meant that every one inch in the figure scale would equate to 20 pixels in my drawing, and that's a fairly easy ratio to work with. From here, I could measure different sizings across the figure and create guides for my own drawing, um, always following that ratio of one inch equals 20 pixels. In addition to his overall height, I used this scheme to plan out the width of his shoulders, height of his legs, and the placement of the belt in the pelvis. Normally when I start a character sprite, I usually use a stick figure skeleton anyway, and in this case it was nice to have reliable and locally sourced proportions established early on in the drawing from having measured the figure. I continue the sprite construction by joining up the line work to map out each part of the body, then start adding thickness and form to those lines to create a rough silhouette. What happened at this point was the guidelines were laid down perfectly symmetrically, so the character ends up facing us dead on, but I wanted it to have just a hint of more perspective to it, so as I continued I kept that in mind, and by the time we get to shading, it's easier to make that distinction. For now, I'm working in a grayscale palette because I find it easier to construct a character based on how many steps of light or dark there are, rather than how many colors at this point. I threw together a palette of six evenly spaced grayscale tones ranging from brightness values of 15 up to 90. I don't think I ended up using all six for this character, but it was just something to work from and gave a few shading options. Here's the final grayscale shaded version of the Kiriko sprite, along with some of the progress steps. I find the easiest approach when making a character is just to get pixels onto the screen first, and then it's much easier to add or delete or move things around from there. You know, like, don't worry about being too perfect when you're first dropping pixels down. Like, if you were a sculptor who makes figures out of clay or something, I imagine it kind of starts like a rough and amorphous sort of thing, and you keep shaping and detailing and refining as you go along. Um, I'm not a sculptor, so hopefully that's an accurate enough description of how it goes for them, but that's kind of how we think about it here anyway. Alright, let's move on to Scope Dog, uh, decidedly the more challenging piece for sure. And because he's got a bit of chunk to him, I think the best thing is to take measurements from a front view and a side view, and then use both to help us fit together kind of a three quarter-ish, side-ish kind of view, just to show all those nice details and kind of a full representation of the character. Oh, and by the way, I've got these nice polished visuals right now to display these measurements, but the real master set is actually just a crudely scribbled page in my notebook. You know, from that day that I sat down with a tape measure and a couple of toys in order to make pixel art. You know, things that normal people do. Anyway, for Scope Dog, I began with the core chest piece. It's the one part upon which all the other pieces can be placed and referenced to. So I laid down a few guides and then popped together the front and side measurements to create the three-dimensional boxy shape, then continued carving the edges into place. The key here was finding the right balance between what I could see from the reference object and what I felt actually looked good in a pixelated style. So the main structure of the core kind of rounds over and slopes down, and a lot of the edges and corners also have a slight rounding to them. So I tried to replicate this look initially, but ultimately decided to interpret those with more crisp edges and hard angles. So most of the construction of the chest piece is built from horizontal lines and slopes of two pixel segments. Once again, I've shaded the entire thing using that palette of six grayscale tones, and I've imagined a light source coming from the top right, so parts of the chest piece angled upwards have a light shade, the ones angled down have a medium shade, and then the side of the character is the darkest shade. And I've applied that shading hierarchy to both parts of the chest piece, which are also light and dark compared to each other just based on their paint job or material. 
These tones help give a clear indication of the geometry and work especially well on boxy or flat shapes like this. Moving on to the head, what's nice here is that it's the dome shape, so I just set my pencil tool to a 35 pixel size circle, which is based on measurements from the figure, and then just placed it down, kind of referencing the placement while looking at the figure from a similar angle. I used some curve shading towards the back of the head to convey a bit of rounding over that dome, and I brought back in the Kiriko sprite because I wanted to verify that the sizing was working just to make sure it looks like he could fit inside this core and head since it's kind of the cockpit space. Jumping ahead here to the legs, I started by building Scope Dog's right leg, sort of the one that's a tad closer to us, and then my intent was that I could just copy and paste that leg over to the other side and it would work in this perspective as well. Um, what I found was that they crowded together a little bit too much, to the point where it was difficult to get a good read on each one individually, so I had to backtrack and work in a slight angle to his right leg, just so it sits further away and creates a bit of space for the other leg to have good visibility too. And I will say, working from a reference figure like this was kind of really fun and different. Like, I've never attempted anything quite like this approach, and I think it helped me develop a better sense of perspective. At least for constructing humanoid mechs, which is a skill I'll use again for sure anyway. Um, often, I find if I'm making a character or a pose just off the top of my head, it can be easy to overlook perspective and anatomy sometimes, because you might be focused on character design or like your actual technique or something. And I have to catch myself sometimes, but with this it was nice, because I always had that real life reference figure to fall back on. So if it was a matter of seeing how the arms overlap the body or like how the angles and perspective go, it was easy just to hold up the figure and then translate what I see back into the pixel dimension. And finally, I put in the scope lenses into the visor. Um, it's the most iconic thing about this design for me, which is why I waited to add it last. It kind of felt like the final piece to bring this entire build together. I didn't mention it before too, but the triple scope design here actually rotates around, kind of like the lenses on a microscope. And in the series, at least, it provides like different vision and tracking effects. For the construction here, I used different size circles for each of the lenses, and then used different shades to create the framework that they sit on. Okay, here's the finalized grayscale construction for Kiriko and Scope Dog. And the last step here is going to be coloring and then a few final refinements. Um, before I do that though, since we're talking about Votom's pixel art, I feel like it's my duty to mention that there is in fact a 16-bit Armor Trooper Votom's game that was released for the Super Famicom in 1993. As far as pixel art style goes, it's different than what I'm going for here. It's kind of a third-person tank shooter that makes use of the Super Nintendo's Mode 7 feature, which is that flat pseudo three-dimensional look that you see. But there are some cool levels that have kind of a racing game with machine gun sort of vibe to them. And I also really like the cockpit view for the heads up display. What I think would be amazing to see is like a side scrolling run and gun style game within this franchise where you'd integrate on foot and in tank combat within the same level. So that's part of the direction I've chosen with the pixel art style here for my piece. Anyway, let's suit up and get to coloring. We've already established some really good contrast by using that evenly spaced grayscale palette. So to apply color to them, I create a new layer and start by just filling the entire sprite with the dominant color. In this case, for Kiriko, most of them is red, so I just go with that. Then I change the layer blending mode to the color option, and it applies that red color to the grayscale contrast sitting in the layer beneath it. So now, instead of grayscale coloring, we have, like, red scale, I guess. From here, I repeat that process, and I use the magic wand tool to select only the pixels of his hair, and just create a new color mode layer filled with blue. And again, the same thing for the skin color. To polish it off, I shift the hues around to establish a wider range of color, so his red jumpsuit, for example, I shift the shading over to more of a purple color. On the actual figure, of course, he's got brown for the shoulder pads and boots, but I kind of like the way the purple here doubles for that material and the shading of the jumpsuit itself, so I'm going to go with that. For Scope Dog, the process is the same, but I started with the red and green on the scope since I want those to pop and just... I was excited about adding color to that part. For the main color, I selected the entire sprite and chose an approximate green tank color, and then again used the blending mode trick to sit that color over the grayscale contrast layer. And the same goes for the lighter areas of the suit, but with more of a cyan kind of tone, just to convey that it's a slightly different material or a different paint job over those areas. Alright, let's jump ahead into the reveal of the final artwork, and then I'll come back and talk about a few of the finishing details. Here we go! Okay, here we are back in Photoshop, just because I wanted to briefly discuss this weathering effect that I've added to the finalized Scope Dog sprite. To start, I had my plain, like, finalized color version, which I've called the factory model. You know, just sort of like a newly issued, unused, clean one. Um, then what I did was take that mid-tone olive green and made it more of a brown, just to give it a slight rust look. I didn't shift the other green, just because it didn't need to be a super overpowering effect. 
Um, and then I've also added a few sort of random pixels along certain edges to get this grimy or used look to it. I think it's more like realistic looking while also maintaining the level of stylization that it has and helps give it that lived in feel. Oh, also, uh, I'm not sure how many Votoms fans there are in the house, but part of Kiriko's like dark past is that he was part of this elite and ruthless squad of soldiers called the Red Shoulders. And their trademark was just, as the name would suggest, having a red shoulder pauldron on their scope dog. So I decided to go back in and do a version of that as well, since it was just an easy color swap. Um, I kind of like playing around with variants like this after all the hard work's been done. So I might go back in and do a version where like the hatch is open to show the cockpit or something, um, or maybe a bit of animation work, I'm not sure. All right, so that was kind of a different process than I normally do. Um, definitely required a lot more planning than usual, uh, but I'm really happy with the result. I don't think I could have pulled it off without the use of a reference like this. Uh, anyway, so now that I'm done playing with my toys, I'm gonna go have myself a juice, snuggle with my blankie, and go nap nap. Thanks again for watching, and take care and keep it square.